Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast, the delightful Conversations with Coaches podcast. As you can probably tell, it's me, Kevin, and I already have a smile on my face because I've been chatting. It took a matter of moments, probably less than 60 seconds, to get an ear-to-ear -ear grin on my face, seeing and talking with Clovet Meikle again. <laughs> I had to reconfirm that I was getting that last name pronunciation right because it's always better to ask than to just stumble over yourself. Thank Clovet you that. is back. And yeah, she it's I, I can't tell you how delighted I am. I, I was already pretty happy, like knowing she was on the schedule. And I'm just I'm like a level up from that already. So please join me as I reacquaint you with Clovet. Let me just re remind you from from our last episode what Clovet's all about. Clovet believes success happens when she finds a better way and shares it with others. She does that by challenging the status quo and thinking differently. After getting fired via voicemail from a software sales job, and I remember this story from last time, Clovet made a commitment to help 100,000 software salespeople secure their future by leveraging their existing intellectual property. Ultimately, what she brings is a trusting relationship where others can count on her with a major focus on how she desires to positively influence the communities that she chooses to serve. Clovet, it's Goodness. great to see you. It's so great. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to reset the stage just so that people can like yes. see you as I'm seeing you and like remember you as I'm remembering you. Thanks for coming back on. This is just, this is oh, selfishly, this is great. I love this. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. And you know, as I was listening to the bio about myself, right? Everything is the exact same from how it was last year, right? The landscape of my business last year, except for one word. And that's now it's emotional. Ooh. I'm focused on people helping people leverage their emotional capital, hmm. right? Hmm. Yeah. And we'll like get phrase. into, yes. <laughs> By the way, that's going to be the title of the episode right there. <laughs> oh, yes. And, you know, going back to getting fired by voicemail, hmm. a lot of times when things happen to us, and I just got to quickly shout out all of my Zoomies. I used to work at Zoom. A lot of them, thousands of them got laid off recently. And that's mm -hmm. rough, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't get fired by Zoom. <laughs> I don't want to put that out there. It was a completely different company. But when something like that happens to you, it's so easy to feel like, oh, this happened to me. Someone did something to me right? Especially when it attacks your income. And for me, the first thing I did when that happened is I went to LA. I went to LA for a month and I just vegged out, laid on the beach. You know, I live on the East coast now. And so I was like, I need to get back to LA, right? Get back to wholeness. Cause it's the perfect place. If you want to get back into your wellness, your health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And I was laying on the beach in Savasana yoga pose. And a thought came to me, like, how did I create this? How did I create this? And how, like, what am I firing in myself? How am I being untrue to myself? How am I being mm. untrue to myself? And the answer for me was that I have managed PTSD. Some will say very successfully, others might not. <laughs> I have managed PTSD for almost 20 years, right? Mm. And it's mm -hmm. something I've been managing in the background. And what I found is that a lot of my colleagues at every job that I would go to, they'd be like, how, how are you always so positive? You know, like, what are you reading? What are you doing? And hmm. for, upon further inspection, I will find out they were also dealing with PTSD or some type of mental deficiency, what someone would call mental deficiency, but they were dealing with it quietly, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Now their sales leadership, because I come from a sales background, may know they're in therapy, but that, that's about all they know, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a deep fear that if they shared exactly what it was that they were dealing with, that it would impact how they were viewed and if they were able to perform in their job, right? This must That's be in the air I today because I've been talking about this on and off all day today and all week <laughs> this week. And I, I, because it's like, it's such a, it's so difficult to to really under to really understand and embrace how, how especially in leadership where you, you do have to present a certain kind of front and you have to be a certain kind of way and be inspiring and be an example and, merging that with the requirement to be vulnerable yes. and to demonstrate and to show it's like, you know, I'm, I am struggling. You don't need to know the details. You don't have to invite everybody into every minute detail of your personal life, but it's yes. important that people see you as you are as a Absolutely. leader. It's so and hard to do. Space for your own humanity. Yeah. Right. It makes you a better leader. 
It, you, don't, you don't think it's going to. You think somehow it's going to diminish you as a leader when really it's going to take you to new levels of leadership. But that's 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 a hard thing to hear. It's a hard thing to say to yourself. It's a hard thing to hear coming from somebody else. But when you do, it's like, you're like, you know what? I think you might be right. How do yeah. I do that? <laughs> yes. I mean, the one instance where I did share it, I felt attacked, right? Every sales mm -hmm. meeting after that, I felt was an attack on my therapy or an attack on how are you managing, you know? Is this mm -hmm. related to, right? And yeah. so I totally get it. But at the end of the day, for me, one of my values is transparency. You see what you get with me, right? Mm -hmm. Good or bad, <laughs> right? What you see is what you get. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is how I created this. And I was like, okay, in order for me not to invite this experience back into my reality, I have to own who I am a hundred percent, thousand percent, right? And so I decided to become vocal about it, right? And inside of doing that, because, you know, I'm in transformation, so once I cover me, it's like, okay, how can I help? Yeah, yes. put your own mask on, you know? That's right, that's right. <laughs> put your own mask on, let's get, get your air, get your oxygen. But it's like, okay, how can I effectively hit that number, 100,000 people, 100,000 souls, 100,000 sales people, and mm -hmm. have it be something that is authentic based off of my own experience, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's... Honestly, I feel like that being this way in the world not only shows other people that they can do do things this way, be vulnerable, be authentic, and have the success they want to have. And I think it simultaneously reveals to us the kind of people we want to surround ourselves with, the kind of people we want to work with, the kind of organizations we want to work with that value this and understand its importance to their bottom line also, but their entirety, everything they're trying to do, all the people they're trying to serve, their clients, their customers, their employees, their partners, everyone. And it's, it really, it becomes something that helps me to better evaluate and choose the people whom I spend my valuable time, my life, my energy with. And so it does, it does the, the people who treat me more like a problem than a person when I show them myself, tells me something about them even as yeah. it helps to illuminate things about myself and the world around me. It's, 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 it's good. It has a good, it has a good sorting and bonding and serving effect that I am. I'm quite yeah. frankly, the more I practice it, the more I, I preach it. <laughs> you see the beauty in it, right? Cause you get uh -huh. to decide what and what you don't want to invite in your own life. Right. That is, and how that it impacts is you. Dang right. That is dang right. <laughs> I love we just like jumped into the deep end. This is like this is this heavy. Like it's, I, I was gonna say it's heavy stuff. It's heavy. It's it's more. It's got gravity. You know, yes. like it's it's dense stuff. But it's like it's it's so important and so valuable. I, I love it. I love I love. And that's again one of the things I love about you as a coach is how how ready you are at the drop of a hat to go all the way into the deep end, and we can come all the way back out and get a little go go to the quote unquote shallow end and talk about yeah. techniques and tactics and you know all the the details of it which are super duper important too which you also bring to the table but it's just i love that ability to move from the from the big heavy dense stuff where it's just like high level concept where it's just like you 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 can have what you want in the world you could be vulnerable and authentic and successful and you can have you can have it all really what you're saying Absolutely. and then let's talk about how you know and yeah. let me show you let me show you how i so how you and how we can do all this together. It's it's I I get very excited about it. I get, almost get over my skis. I'm just like, oh, it's so good to be a part of this <laughs> this this movement, you know? Absolutely. You know, one of my favorite coaches, his name is Corby. I'm gonna actually introduce you guys. He has this favorite quote that I love. Like you can have anything, you can have any and everything that you want, but not all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so freeing because first of all, it busts a myth that there's something out of your capacity to create. It's a, it's yeah. literally a false idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? But it also brings down into reality that you do have to focus on, I don't want to say one thing at a time, but preferably, right? One thing at a time in a given moment, right? But intentionally pour your energy towards something or someone so that you can see it like a plant grow, you know? Mm hmm yeah. And so for me, I'm always looking at how I can balance that, right? How can I bring my authentic self, right? Have all that I want anytime that I want it while also having the sense of like reality, right? Mm. When it comes to creating my goals, are there small goals? Are they measurable? 
am I really acquiring the result that, that I want? Because as we talked about before you hit record, when you're in personal development or transformation, a lot of times it, it can become romanticized. <laughs> we'll set these lofty goals, but we forget that some of the tactics that we use in sales or marketing or whatever industry we're in are required. You have to put those things in, right? Yeah. Having a daily routine and things of that nature so that we can actually meet our result and meet it with excellence. I think that's such an important, an important point and an important concept to be able to, to, to learn how to navigate because a lot of times we fall into this trap of thinking that if you, if you want to dream big, you have to dream unrealistically. Yeah. And if you want to, if you want to be realistic, you have to dream small. And that's, that's again, that's false. That's false. You can dream big and work on the details. In fact, Absolutely. that is, that, that's the way dreams are dreams and details are details. And it's like, it's that focus that lets you do it. But yeah, I think we've, we've, we've bought into that false narrative that, that dreams have to be small to be realistic or achievable, or that our, our details have to be like real grounded, you know, our, our, for us to be able to dream the way that we think that we should dream rather than both, you know, yeah. we, yeah. you can have it all. You can. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Prior to the advent of advertising and television, we completely bought into whatever was put in a book. Now mm -hmm. we completely buy into whatever we see on YouTube videos <laughs> and, <take TikTok. laughs> mm -hmm. and Twitter, right? We completely buy into those concepts without vetting them. And I think yeah. that's when you really start taking ownership of your own transformation. When you start vetting idea, other people's ideas and your own, like, wait a minute. <laughs> Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. How much data is backed by this concept? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do I agree with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's so important. It's like a scientist. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is what good coaching is all about, really. It's like those these asking good questions. And when the when the questions are really good, sometimes just holding them open. You don't have to immediately arrive at a solution. In fact, yeah. sometimes you just need to sit there and sit there with the uncertainty and be like, I don't know about this. I should sit with it for a while, think about it, feel on it talk to other people about it, do a little bit of the further research, sit and think about it some more. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The question's going to arrive at its destination, which may or may not be an answer, something to keep in mind. It's going to get there. You might arrive at a better question, which those are always the moments where I get really excited, where I just like a good question. And I was like, I'm not, I don't know how to answer it. I'm not even quite sure how to approach it. I bring the right people into my life. I have coach to kind of talk it through with me. And then I arrive at a question that was really the question I think I was going for all along, but I didn't know it until I took the time to sit with it, had the space held for me, had the nudges that I needed to go in the right directions, all that stuff. That's just what good coaching is all about. It gets me so, it gets me so excited. It's so contagious. And yes, it can be inspirational. It could be these big dreams and this big, like just really positive thing in your life that you don't have to allow to shift over the line into romanticized. You know, you have to romanticize it to be in love with it, you know? That is so true. <laughs> so true. You know, one of the things that I think about often, because I feel like Eckhart Tolle, he frames it so perfectly, like being the watcher. Yeah. Right? So instead of internalizing a particular experience that you're going through, it's like almost having an out-of-body experience, watching how, how am I interpreting this? <laughs> what actions, you know, based off of my interpretations did I take? And then using that data, even with that question, right? How am I interpreting this question, right? And then taking that data and using it to empower our big dreams, you know? I think it's such an excellent concept, especially when you kind of learn, because when you when I first read it, I was like being the watcher, like watching myself. <laughs> me watching me, okay, got it, <laughs> right? But once I took it on, it in a lot of cases saved my life and the life of others because instead of being the person that immediately had an answer or immediately was judgmental about a particular thing I was able to really investigate <laughs> my hmm. own interpretation right and then make a smarter more holistic more human choice yeah well put yeah it's more human you really do give yourself the space to be fully human when you do that like you kind of allow rather than just be in your body and be experiencing it and in and sort of in a way a bit of a not not a slave to but sort of beholden to your reactions 
like the way someone can say a certain thing or do a certain thing and you could you could immediately feel it inside you and the feeling yeah. is it's it's your feeling it is correct it is accurate it is who you are but you don't want to allow what happens next to be solely defined by that you want Absolutely. the watcher to come in and help and that's <laughs> and again when you when you lay it out like that it sounds so simple it's like oh of course that's i could see how that would totally work but we move through our lives and we're like we get we get lost we get confused we don't realize we have this power we don't realize we have these choices and or you know what you know what i'm finding with a lot of my clients hmm. and i resonate with it because i used to do it all the time hmm. we immediately want to jump into a solution Right. So I'll get my clients to come to me. They'll be like, how do I fix this? And they immediately want to take some formula, <laughs> some strategy, some tactic mm -hmm. and immediately solve it. And I'm like, mm, you could do that. <clears throat> However, taking that approach, likely you're going to experience the same thing over again. So let's take a step back and really investigate how you are interpreting this, how these facts, these experiences that is it right in front of you, right, is really shaping your life and the decisions that you make. Then once we have clarity on that, you know, then we can implement a strategy, which I think is the most powerful play, right? Mm -hmm. Because a strategy is implemented and you know with absolute certainty, this is not something that you're going to have to face again. It's not like going to be a revolving door. <laughs> And that's and not to not to toot your horn or anything like that, but you are you're nailing it and demonstrating exactly why you're such a great coach. To be perfectly frank, you're just, because you're cut you're cutting right to the chase to be like this is this is how simple it could be. It's going to be work. There's going to be some challenges, but this is how simple it can be. You just need somebody who's going to be able to tell you the right things at the right moments and tell you to wait when waiting is a good idea. Tell you to pause and hold space, hold that space for you and with you when it's when it's when it's right, and not just try to rush to the solution and. Quite frankly, yes, this is why you're such a great, a great person to have by some by your side, by someone's side, especially during periods of transformation when there's so much chaos around that it could be hard to it could be hard to see anything, let alone yourself oh, with clarity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am that for a lot of people, but honestly, if I didn't have people that was that for me, mm. <laughs> I can't coach myself. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, Every one of us, like each and every one of us can motivate ourselves. We say the affirmations, right? We get ourselves in a state of positive psychology. Yes, that's our responsibility. But when the heat is on, you need a partner. You need a trusted advisor. And the mm -hmm. same things that I need is what I aspire to be for other people. Because I know that it's required. <laughs> it's required mm -hmm. to operate inside of integrity and impeccability and excellence when you are in chaos, when nothing seems to be going right, right? Or you're shooting for something that you really feel is bigger. This is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we have all those questions that we really don't say out loud. <laughs> That's when you know you need someone. <laughs> might be, might be bigger. It might be bigger than me, but it's not bigger than us. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, I found myself telling my clients the same thing. One of my beloved coaches used to say to me, you don't have to believe. I take my belief. I believe for you. Mm. Belief is not required. Your belief is not required. <laughs> You'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> One of yeah. us at the front can hold the light for now, but yeah. we'll each have our own lights eventually. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'll be at the front of the, at the, at the front of the group next time we need somebody to, to lead the way. But for right now, just come with me. Let's Far go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, well, shoot. I, I'm just looking up at the clock, trying to be a good podcast host. And the time is just <laughs> it's zooming by, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> so you've demonstrated admirably and quite frankly, impeccably why you're such a great coach. So how can people find out more about you? How can people get, how can people get to you? Like where yeah. can they find you? Where's website, LinkedIn, social media, carrier pigeon, <laughs> like snail mail. Like what's the, what's the best way to get more of this from you? <laughs> yeah. The quickest way is LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn every day. Right. Nice. I'm on even when I'm not posting, I'm on in inboxes. <laughs> the quickest way, I do have a page where you can schedule time with me at aboutme.com forward slash Clovet. I make it easy. I'm also on Clubhouse a lot. I'm on TikTok. Yeah, if you're on Clubhouse, we have to connect for sure. I haven't um, been on Clubhouse in a little while. I got to say, it kind of <laughs> fell off my social media radar. <laughs> it's been it's been LinkedIn for me. LinkedIn and then still a little bit of Twitter, which yeah, that's 
that's more of like I'm watching the house burn down sort of situation. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but then in TikTok, because it's just it's such an easy way to like get allow people to see me and get to know me before I even know they exist. Like it's it's it begins the trust journey. Like it's it begins that vulnerability, that availability, that authenticity journey before I even take the first step. And so I'm just like, just get, just get out there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And right now is a perfect time for your listeners because I am wrapping up my certification for hypnotherapy. And so I'm doing an initiative called Transform 100. So I'm gifting a hundred people in my community hypnotherapy. And so Ooh, it's is that, really about. is that started now? Is that already started? Because yeah, uh, we're recording this in the middle of February, which I probably <laughs> not normally air until like later, later in March. But I think I might bump this up in the schedule so that this, so we can get the word out about this. So if this is available now, I'll make sure this airs a lot sooner to today. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm launching it tomorrow. I'm put, making my first post about it tomorrow. So we're you're good. Perfect. Yeah, because I don't think I'm gonna get through 100 people in two weeks. Because <laughs> it's such a personal thing. Yes, I could do a group thing, but it's such a personal thing. And I, I want everyone to get the value, right, from participating. And the three things that we're going to be looking at is values, right? How to create values that drive your desired life, hmm. right? How to consistently hold on to those values. Because one of the things I've noticed with my own clients, when they write their values, I have everyone write their values, I can pinpoint how they're negating their own positivity, so how do you write your values in a way that's locked into your dream, right? And then the third thing is actually receiving the hypnotherapy, right? So the most common things I see, especially for salespeople and people that are looking to launch their own business or already inside their own business is imposter syndrome, right? Feeling like, mm, who am I to speak about this? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah procrastination, thinking that, oh, I'm just such a huge procrastinator. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a false narrative. Uh -huh. Right? And how do you really deal with the anxiety and all the things that come up when you go to communicate who you are, what you do, and the impact mm. that you want to have in the world? I love that. I love that. Okay. Yeah. I will. I will I'll make sure this gets posted as close to today as possible. <laughs> and I'll just, I'll just direct people to your LinkedIn to like, hey, check, find this post reach out, find out more, get, take advantage of this offer. If you missed it, she's still here. <laughs> do yourself a favor and connect. I'll make sure all that's in the show notes too. Clovet, um, can we do this again in like a few months? Absolutely. Like, can can Absolutely. I get you in like an April or May or whatever? And just, cause this is just Absolutely. Been really I'm always a yes for you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it warms my heart. Okay. I have to be a responsible host as we've already hit our half an hour mark. That's that, that flew by. I'm looking forward to losing some time delightfully again in the near future. So thank you. <laughs> Blessings to you. And to the audience, you've heard, you know what to do next. <laughs> Find out more about Clovet and we will have the pleasure of sharing more time with you again very soon.